Hey guys, welcome back to Minecraft The Lost Journals. Today, we're we'll reading Chapter 7, which is titled, Boom, Surely. It starts on page 71 and goes to page 78. If you guys have enjoyed this novel so far, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more Minecraft The Lost Journal. Without further ado, Chapter 7. Mecca's mom knew something was up. The sting of the helmet failure passed quickly as Max read more about enchanting from the journal. At home, Max happily made breakfast every morning now, usually getting up before his mom so he could get practice with cooking to better try the recipes in the book. Allison had shown him how to use the improved furnace and equipment and his growing brewing and all chemicals skilled for making his meals actually edible. His mom was certainly grateful for the help but he was pretty sure it was written in the mom handbook that no mother will simply accept a sudden bout of helpfulness from a kid. Something had to be up. What has gotten into you, she asked, eyeing her breakfast mutton chops suspiciously. Have you drugged me? Mom, he protested. Can a kid do something nice for his mother? No, she said. It's really unheard of. I think what he means is we've caused you enough trouble in the past few weeks, Allison said, biting into her own breakfast. We figured we'd do something nice. She swallowed. See, no poison. Good save, he thought. Not to mention we don't want to know notice right away how good the tools are around the house have gotten. Allison had insisted on continuing to prove the tools in the house. She said it was partly for practice, partly because she felt bad deceiving his mom when she'd been so generous. She would offer to cut wood for the furnace so Max could do dinner. Then she'd go out with the old iron axe and come back in with a bunch of wood and a shiny new iron axe. His mom never noticed. The day he had tried to enchant Allison's helmet, his outlook on the world drastically changed. Max had snuck into the woods after he'd heard Allison was asleep. When she lost her temper about the spider eyes, he realized she might be on to something no matter how much that annoyed him. He thought that maybe the spider eyes could be included in the recipes by the enchanter for a specific reason that people wouldn't follow his recipes. If Max could figure out what kind of ingredient, if any, the spider eyes replaced, then the recipes might work. Once he got that down and he found the enchanter's stash of lapis lazuli, from there it would be easy. Allison had said she would consider going through the portal. Max was getting more confident with his skills, and if she trusted him, then she might help him. He knew the enchanter was in the nether, and he was sure that the enchanter needed help. He may not be able to convince Allison of this, but he knew she wouldn't let him go through alone. His mom had slowly reduced the terms of their grounding, and B, and he and Allison were actually able to get some real work done during the day now. Provided they got their chores finished, they didn't bar burrow into the hill, chop down any more trees, or accidentally open up holes in into any neighbor's farms, so they were almost above suspicion. Still, so long as they followed the rules of getting home by sundown and avoiding any injuries or burns while crafting, they were in the clear. When they finished sanitizing the pumpkin patch of skeletal remains, they cooled the last of the lava with buckets of water, making loads of cobblestone that then had to be excavated. I thought water and lava made obsidian, Max lamented, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I think you have to be at the source of the lava, Allison said. Max opened his mouth to suggest going back into the cave Allison had found, but when she glared at him, he shut it. We could get the blocks from the sheep pen, Allison said as they relaxed, exhausted from hauling the cobblestone out of the garden. But why do you want to do? We don't need any extra anyway. The portal is ready. But I can't imagine you can ever have too much obsidian. If we got separated from the portal in the nether, we'd need to build another one. But if we took those blocks, what would fix the holes in the pen? Max asked. She looked at him and laughed. Actual wood? Fence, segments, gates, you know, proper map patches. Not just stacks of highly valuable blocks, he shrugged. It worked, didn't it? Keep, keeping them inside the house would work too, but 
We don't know. We don't do that either, she countered. He gave an exaggerated sigh. All right, let's get the ones from the pen and fix the pen, she reminded him. And fix the pen, he agreed. Unfortunately, the diamond pickaxe was one of the things that they had to keep back at the cabin, lest Max's mom discover it. They couldn't do much with obsidian blocks that were now patching up the fence. Mr. Hatch had returned some of the sheep to their pens temporarily, stating that he needed to take the bellwether to get some confidence training. So, Little Prince and Apple stood at the fence to watch them, hopefully. But all the kids managed to do was poke at the heavy blocks with their tools before they gave up. The obsidian back at the cabin will have to be enough for you, Allison said, putting her pickaxe away. Sorry about the fence, he said. It seemed like a good idea. Well, your obsidian patch worked, but it worked like using a diamond pick to mine cobblestone, she said ruefully. Let's go. Back at the cabin, they discover the enchanter did have more obsidian in one of his chests. That stash, plus what they could gather from beside the portal, was more than enough to build another portal. While Max did the hate and the loss of valuable obsidian, obsidian blocks back to the pen, he admitted he didn't really need them. Once Allison had crafted enough equipment, she felt it might be time to at least test the portal. They had their equipment and the extra obsidian stashed in the chest next to the portal. Allison gazed up at it. This portal is huge, she said. Too big for what was needed. How can a portal be too big, Max said, looking at the portal in wonder. Big or small, it's a door. Well, it's a waste of resources, isn't it, she said. Obsidian isn't easy to come by. So if you want to get to the nether, if it exists, it exists. Max interjected. If it exists, then why not use the bare minimum? Why work to get over 26 blocks when you need only 14? She squinted at the plans. Actually, we only need 10, at least according to your enchanter. We don't need to fill in the corners here. She pointed to an alternate portal plan drawn in the corner on the, of the page. It looked like a rectangle, except that it was missing the four blocks that made up the corners. Ten, that's it? Ten didn't sound very impressive. When Max imagined another portal, he imagined a huge gaping door into another world. Not something slightly larger than his front door. Luckily, we have ten blocks, she said. If you want to wait until we have thirty to take it with us, then by all means, I'm happy staying home while you look for more, more obsidian. They really thought adventuring would involve less math. Fine, whatever. Can we light it now? She bit her lip. I guess we can test it to see if it works, just to see that much promise. He nodded and went running for the flint and steel. When he returned, she was still studying the portal's construction. The real challenge to the portal creation, Max realized, was the plan and the supplies. If someone did it for you, then all you had to worry about was the last step. Put a fire in the middle of the portal to achieve, activate it. They ignored the note to include a fermented spider eye, spider eye in the fire. Max had pulled out one of his pockets, but Allison had given him such a glare that he put it back. Allison bent and pulled her golden helmet out of the chest beside the portal and stroked it. I still can't believe we got enough gold for me to make a helmet, she said as Max smacked the flint against the steel. I thought working with rare elements would make crafting harder, but this gold was actually pretty easy to work with. Try enchanting, Max said ruefully. That's harder. She glanced up at him as the fire broken. He sighed, frustrated, and stood up. Will you give it a try? You're always better with fire than I am. He handed the tools over. She hesitated and then took them, trading him the helmet to hold. She bent before the portal, trying to get a spark to light. Right now, he could see was the clearing on the other side of the portal, grass, flowers, and the woods beyond. But soon, if they'd done everything right, he would see a shimmering portal to another world. He grinned in anticipation. I can't believe we're finally doing this. Neither can I, honestly. I keep expecting something to go wrong, Allison said, striking the flint again. She stood up and took a step back. I'm still not sure this is the best idea. 
What, he said, tearing his eyes away from the beautiful black blocks and staring at her. You're getting too scared to just activate it now. He pulled the flint and steel from her hands. Here, I'll do it. Let's just see if it works. Then we can go home. Promise. Allison was silent. She stared at the portal like it menaced her. Aren't you just a little bit curious to see if it works, he asked desperately. She gave up and turned away, throwing her hand into the air in frustration. Fine, activate it, then we'll go through it, because you'll come up with another reason to make me take the next step. And then we'll be transported to another world, where we have no idea how to handle ourselves. And then we'll probably die or something worse. Yeah, Mom will find out. That would be worse, Max said, and smacked the flint at the steel a bit harder than he meant to. A spark flared and then died. Why do you always anticipate the worst? Sure, we've made mistakes, but look at this thing. That has gone right. Smack. We've taught ourselves to craft, enchant, brew potions, even cook. For everything that's gone wrong, we've achieved or learned two things. Smack. Doesn't matter how much we've learned if one thing goes wrong and we're done for. It wouldn't matter if we had the whole knowledge of the overworld at our fingertips, she said, eyes on the flint and steel. You're doing that wrong anyway. Let me smack. Mac lost it. I don't want you to do it. And you know what? I didn't want you to move in. I didn't want my mother to treat you like the daughter she never had and build you an entire wing of our house just for you. I didn't want to get her grounded and have you take over half my room. He stuck the steel again, and you snore. She whirled on him. That's a lie, she snarled. She snatched the flint and steel from his hands. Oh, give me that. Smack. A spark flared. Allison's eyes went wide. Her face bathed in a purple glow. The air behind Max began to hum and crackle, and he could feel it pulling at him. But he wasn't paying attention to the portal because he had something else he had to stare at. While they had been building and then arguing, they had lost track of time. Now the sun, sun hung low in the sky and the mobs that preferred the dark had come out to see what the fuss was about. From around the cabin, a terrifying green face had pe- peeked. Hissing slightly, it merged, its lengthy, armless body wandering on three legs. His mind went completely blank. He had been taught that the but he had been taught the basics of how to avoid a creeper attack. It was something parents taught all children taught all children from birth. But the steps completely left his mind. He'd been so excited and then so angry, now so shocked. Was he supposed to stay still? Run, dig a hole and hide in it. And what it, would Allison do if she saw it? The portal's purple glow shed an unworldly light on the clearing. Allison still stared at it, smiling in wonder. She hadn't seen or heard the appearance of the same kind of monster that had destroyed her home. The creeper moved forward on its tripod legs, hissing louder. Max reached out and took Allison's hand. You're right, she said. This is amazing. Allison, he said softly, we need to run. We just got it lit, she said, and you haven't even looked at it. She turned to see what he was staring at, and sucked her in, breathed in panic. The creeper was getting closer. It was hissing louder. Allison made a high-pitched panic noise deep in her throat. The steel fell to the ground. Allison, I can't remember what to do. Max asked, looking around for something to throw at the advancing monster. The creeper began to quiver, and Max could only think of one option left to them. He jumped into the portal pulling Allison after him. Everything went purple, and dimly he could hear the explosion that indicated the creeper had detonated. That wraps up Chapter 7. I hope that you guys enjoyed and if you did, hit that like button, and I will see you next time.